all, um, I wish to review what is Riemann sum lead us to. Most of the functions we deal with are integrable. And uh, when we talk about function, look at this curve, the blue curve here is the function. It is a rule that assign each input exactly one output. So when we construct the Riemann sum, we notice that we have this um, typical slice, typical slice, okay? Uh, we can change to a different color, but it's okay. We have that uh, typical slice. The, the height of the typical slice is, is f of, um, is f of, um, is this quantity, right? f of xi star. So that's the height. The width of the rectangle is delta x. Once we have this typical slice and we can pretty much construct the Riemann sum and take limit and we get the area underneath the curve. So if you look at the area we constructed, we have all these rectangles starting from A, ends at B. And uh, so this area under the curve has three sided, three sides are straight. So this side is straight, this side is straight, and the horizontal side is straight. So that's the, that's the kind of area where we're gonna find. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. The first one is 2x plus 1 over x. So the curve we drew here, right, between 1 and the 3, 1 and 3. So if you look at the area, the area of our interest is this piece. Uh, right there. So this is the area we are looking for. This is the area we are looking for. And if you draw a typical cell, a typical slice, right? If we draw a typical slice, just arbitrarily, typical slice, and the height, the height is obviously f of x, right? And the, and the delta x. So there's the vertical. So you can imagine this rectangle is scattered throughout this, um, right? And you, you we have a typical slice. We have a typical slice. The three sides are straight. Straight. Three sides are straight. So that's the area we're looking for. That's the area under the curve. So to find this area, we just have to uh, use the um, fundamental theorem of calculus, right? The antiderivative of two x is x squared, and the antiderivative of one over x is ln x, and uh, evaluate at the endpoints. Okay, so that equals true. Let me clean this up. Okay, let's clean this up. So here we go. This is the area we're looking for. And we plug in three. Subtracting, we plug in one, okay, so in the end, so we get nine plus ln three minus one, ln one equals zero. So in the end, we get eight plus ln three. That's it. Another example, we look at this function, right? Four minus x, times root x 
its antiderivative can be found, and the area we are looking for is right underneath the curve. This time we we don't have three sided straight because each it, it touches zero, right? Uh, it's starting from zero, and so the curve for and the area is going to be the antiderivative evaluated at four and zero. So the antiderivative four is four x, and the oh, actually, sorry, we we need to we need to do something to to find the antiderivative. Okay, so we we're gonna multiply root x with four. Um root x with x, and uh, we can see this uh, as times x raised to the power of x to the power of half. And this is just for the convenience, find the antiderivative, and this piece equals to x raised to the power of 3 half. And then we're gonna find antiderivative. And the antiderivative, we just follow the formula. Okay, we leave out, leave out the four. And uh, it's one over one plus half. And multiply x raised to the power of three half. Subtracting the antiderivative of x raised to the power of 3 half, so we get a 1 over 1 plus 3 half. Multiply x raised to the power of 5 half. So all of these are evaluated at 0 and 4. Right, and then we just plug in. Uh, when we plug in zero, we got zero. So all of these will be substituted by four. Okay, so the other part we just uh, omitted because it's a zero. So this is a four, right? And simplify. And we have we have to deal with the fraction. So this is a four times one over three half. So this is gonna be four times two over three. Two over three. Okay, because one over three half, so that's two over three, multiply, four is two squared, so it's gonna be two to the power of, power of three. Subtracting, and this piece is gonna be two fifths, and uh, multiply two to the power of five. Okay, so we are almost there. Simplify, so this is going to be three over, no, three under, this is eight, eight times eight is 64. It's talking five under, two times two to the power of five. So the power of five is 32, so this is 60. Four. Right, two to the power times 32. Two times 32 is 64. Then we're going to find common denominator. Okay, we should factor it out as 64. Multiply one third minus one fifth. And that's, that's going to be a bit easier if we do that way. So 64 multiply, uh, that's gonna be 15 under, 15 under two. Almost there. So it's 128, 128 over 15.
we're done. Okay, so that's the uh, area we're looking for. And this one is the curve uh, is two times sine x multiply e, uh, subtracting e to the power x. And you can see the curve, the area is probably because it's from uh, zero to three. So from, so this piece, so that is, the, that's the area. Obviously the area we're looking for is going to be, is going to be a negative area. So all of these from zero to, so all of these, this is the area we're gonna find is size and it's gonna be a negative, right? And uh, let's go for it, let's go for it. Okay, area. And it should be pretty straightforward. The antiderivative of sine is a negative cosine. Subtracting e to the power x, e to the power x, right? So the whole of it, that's the antiderivative evaluated at zero and three. Right? So we're going to so we get negative sign there. So we probably just move out the negative sign. Um bring this one inside the bracket, right? Remove the negative sign. So that's plus. And we have this uh, points to be evaluated. We're applying, we get negative sign outside. And this piece is evaluated as three, right? Cosine three, and that's three. Subtracting two times cosine zero, subtracting e to the power of zero. Okay, so that's evaluated as zero as three and simplify. Okay, so we got negative bracket two times cosine three plus e to the power of three Ah, let's look at that. Cosine zero is one, so negative two minus one, so minus three, and that's it. Or if you like to absorb this negative sign inside, so you get three minus these two, minus, that's it, that's the answer. Okay, you can see how to how to relay the area under the curve with definite integral. Uh, we got two more. Okay, this is the piece of cosine pi x divided by two from zero to one, zero to one. So the area we're looking for is this piece. And uh, just, uh, but here we need to use substitution method, substitution method, okay? So to use substitution method, we're going to assume x equal to, or maybe we'll use u, okay? u equals to pi times x over two, right? And as a result, u equals to the u would equals to pi over two dx. Okay. U equals to pi x over two. So dx dx will equal to 2 over pi 
times du. So we can complete the substitution and last but not least, we will have this little table I think we need one more row. Okay, so this is the, this is X this is U, and the U equals to pi X over two. X is from zero to one. Okay, while well, X is zero, U is zero. When x is one, u is pi over two. So this substitution, after the substitution, um, the integration would change from x to u. No, uh, over here. So um, let's change everything to u. So we get cosine u dx equals to two over pi okay so we'll bring two over pi to the front okay everything changed to u and the interval change from zero to one to zero to pi over two There. So now we, we can also bring two over pi outside and the antiderivative cosine u is sine u. Okay. Evaluate at zero to pi over two. All right. So we have we're gonna plug in. Okay, u replaced by pi over two. Tracting zero, right? Cosine zero is zero. So in the end, we get two over pi. So you can see substitute the method is used here. All right, I think this will be the next one will be the last one. No, that's not the last, actually section to last. We'll want to find the area between one to two. The area underneath the curve from one to two. So this piece, and we want to find the area in between, okay? And how do we set up? So that's gonna be integration. Where's my symbol? Right here. Integration from a one to two with this function. dx, okay? To complete it, we need substitution. Okay, we will we'll let u equals to one over x, one over x, so the u The u equals to negative one over x squared dx interval. Oops. Clean this up. Interval interval wise, uh, x from one to two, and you will be from the reciprocal. 
right? So this is a one and this is a half. Okay. Go back to the integration. We have integral, sorry, integral e to the power u, e to the power u, right? One over x squared, that's gonna be negative du negative du. How do I get that? Well, from here, so let me just give you one more step. Here we go. So one over x squared dx equals to negative du. That's, that's how we get it because here we get x squared under dx, x squared under dx, negative du. And the interval is going to be for u. u is going to be for 1 all the way to half. All right? So now we have a negative sign here. And we have a number of the higher uh, a to b, half is smaller than 1. If we swap a half and 1, we will get another negative sign. So if we swap these two, okay, so we get e to the power u du, which we don't longer have that negative sign because the negative times negative makes positive. And the antiderivative e to the power u is e to the power u with respect to u evaluated at and one. So we get e to the power one minus e to the power half. e to the power half is the root e. That's it. Okay. So we use substitution method to finish the integration. That was also to find the area under the curve. Uh, finding the area under the curve. Okay, this is the last. This is the last one for this lesson. So we want to find the area between negative three to positive three. Obviously, there's some kind of symmetry here. Um, we could we, we could use. Uh, we 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 would just integrate, right? So the area we're looking for is between negative three to positive three. And so everything under the curve. Boom. Okay. So to find this area, so we set up integration from negative three to positive three and we're integrating that function dx. Now we're gonna do substitution again. Okay. Um, so here we go, we're gonna write it this way. Okay. E to the power x, e to the power x, e to the power 2x, we're going to make it e to the power x squared. Okay. So we're going to assume with u equals to e to the power x. Okay. So du. Du equals to, oops, equals to e to the power x dx. All right. Interval wise, one more row. 
whoops, let me clean this up. So this is X, this is a U. X is from negative three to positive three, right? And so U is E to the power of negative three, and this is E to the power of three. Okay. And uh, the integration becomes, boom. So that's going to be e to the power x times dx, that's du. Oops. e to the power x, sorry. e to the power x. So this is du. And the bottom is 1 plus u squared. 1 plus u squared. And uh, from e to the power negative 3, Oh, let me make it larger font, even larger. You cannot see the, the e to the power negative three. And the upper limit is e to the power three. Boom. And that's, and the antiderivative one over u squared, that's, R ten U evaluated at e to the power three, right? So that's gonna be lower limit e to the power negative three, upper limit e to the power three. There. In the end, we get arc 10 e to the power 3 subtracting arc 10 e to the power of negative 3. Boom. That's, that's the area underneath the curve, um, under this curve. All right. Um, that's all for this time. You can see the area under the curve can be uh, can be done, okay, by applying fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Thank you for watching.